Hello, everybody. And is everybody well today? <laughs> oh, I am so glad to hear that. And me? Oh, yes, I'm doing very well, thank you. Still vertical, still above the grass. <laughs> Now, where are we off to today, you ask? Well, let me tell you about Aviation Action, who wrote me about a month ago to wish me all the very best for 2022. And he hoped that this year would be a better year than the last one. Well, I can certainly hope for that. He describes himself as a photographer who uploads mainly aviation pictures, such as those for plane spotting. He told me that he lives in Sydney, Australia, and he's invited me to pop down under and fly from his hometown airport, which is YSSY, which is in Sydney, and pop over to Adelaide, which is YPAD. And why not? Why not indeed? Today is sunny in England, but it is still cold. We're only three degrees outside today. That's, by the way, is 37 degrees Fahrenheit. But down under in Sydney, the temperature there is a wonderful 22 degrees. That's 72 Fahrenheit. Sydney, you see, it is late summer and the temperatures there are very nice and warm. And that's what I prefer. I prefer a warmer climate, you know. And what about my pal, Father Ludovic, you ask? Well, He's still in Italy, and I did check, and he told me that today they have it's sunshine, but it is 10 degrees outside. That's 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Certainly better than we have here in England, but let's see, 10 degrees in Verona, 72 degrees in Sydney. Decisions, decisions. Oh, I'm going to Sydney. <laughs> Sorry, Ludovic. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> now, I did a check and found, of course, that the great airline, Qantas Airlines, flies that route regularly between Sydney and Adelaide. And I checked it out and we found Qantas Flight 733. 733. If you want to look that up on Flight Aware, you just put in QF733, okay? Now, I've got two really great airport sceneries for today. YSSY Sydney is made by Flight Tampa. Beautiful scenery, very detailed. And YPAD Adelaide Scenery is made by an Australian company called AU Scene. AU Scene. Beautiful scenery. Lots of detail. Now, there are no COVID passports or other COVID restrictions required to fly on Ryanair 186. And it's because we are Ryanair that we have no restrictions at all. We are Ryanair and resistance is futile. <laughs> now, while we're loading up all of that great Australian beer, along with champagne and caviar, of course, let's go on over to pre-flight and plan our flight, shall we? Well, here we are in Flight Aware and we're looking at Qantas 733. And there's the designator. If you put that into Flight Aware, it will come up with this page. 
This particular flight arrived over 12 hours ago at gate 21 in Adelaide. And it left gate 11. Well, we'll have a look in a moment to see where gate 11 is located. Going down below, we'll have a look at the flight. Took off from Sydney, went straight across and then into Adelaide. Nothing really spectacular about that route. 38,000 feet though, that's the height that it uh, was flying at while it made this particular journey. And if you see, it is also a 737-800 that was making this flight. So we should be able to make the same one. Taxi time was 10 minutes, it says, and taxi time less than 10 minutes at arrival. There you can see it was a 737-800. Speed, the file was 521 miles an hour, 38,000 feet. And the actual is 649 nautical miles. Now, having a look at flight radar 24, this is live flights departing right now from... Australia's Sydney Airport. And here you can see the runway that is in use is this one. I'll zoom in and let's find out. Oh, that one just landed. This is runway 34 left. So it looks like everything is departing from 34 left today. And to find out where this particular flight originated, I went over here to see where this one started out. And here, this is the domestic one terminal. So we will be parked at one of these gates right around here, one of these stands right here. That's where we will park and so we can follow the route exactly as we can for the flight to Adelaide. Now here's the airport at Adelaide and this is where that particular flight came in. You can see here, this is all from the transponder by the way. And it came up and it went around and then it docked right here at this main terminal in Adelaide. So we will try to do exactly the same as this. It's always more fun if we can follow the exact flight, don't you think? And this is, of course, Qantas Flight 733, as you can see right there. All right, let's have a look at Windy. We've pretty much seen which runway is being used for departure because the wind is coming from uh, 030 and it's five knots. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Clouds few at 2000. Broken 5000, broken 8000. Temperature is a nice warm 22 degrees. I like that. Q&H 1014, which is pretty much standard. And it is VFR. But here you can see the wind is coming straight down. So we will probably have a crosswind takeoff. We should be parked somewhere here. And that means we're going to have to make our way all the way down to the end of the runway. That's going to be a long taxi in order to make our departure today, but that's what we shall have to do. Looking at our destination, here the wind is coming from a different direction. It's coming from 220, coming directly from the south. Six knots is the speed, ceiling and visibility okay, temperature 21. Dew point is 19. Q&H is 1010. Slightly lower pressure than over in Sydney, but it's still VFR. 
and looking at the runways, well, we will be probably coming in on this one. And again, it's going to be a crosswind landing. Oh, well, we're, we're, we're Ryanair. We can do those things. All right, let's go into sim brief. We are Ryanair and we are 186. We are departing from Yankee Sierra, Sierra Yankee. And we're going to go to Yankee Papa Alpha Delta. And MAV is the alternate. I don't know which that one is, but we'll look it up in a moment. Here's our airframe. That's used by SimBrief to calculate weight, balance, distribution, fuel burn, fuel requirements, etc., etc. And Cruise Profile 6 is one of the factors that it uses. Registration is right there. It's saying that the scheduled flight time is 2 hours and 25 minutes. Departure is 3 4 left, which is pretty much what we thought, and arrival on 2-3 in Adelaide. We are passengers four, and of course today we have one ton of freight, caviar, champagne, and especially for this occasion, a couple of pallets of good Australian beer. And there is the flight route for today. Okay, going down, we'll have a look at the map. Oh, Melbourne. That's our, uh, oh no, not Melbourne, Avalon. Avalon is the uh, alternate airport should anything go pear-shaped. And there's the route going all the way across New South Wales. I'm looking forward to this. Okay, let's go up to the top and we will save the flight and let's generate the flight plan. All right, here's the, the summary that it's uh, come up with. There's our aircraft, origin, destination, there's the alternate. We are flying at 34,000 feet. Okay, that's what it's given us. That's what we'll fly. Airtime is 144. Block fuel is 9,327 kilograms. We will be filling up on those center tanks, obviously, with this. And right here, this is who we are, Ryanair 186. And right here, this is our flight level, and this is the flight route. There is the alternate should things go pear-shaped. We are cost index 6, and there is the average wind and speed for our flight route. We're going to need almost 9.5 tons of fuel loaded on today. And we're almost four tons in reserve, but we are almost five tons in the trip and the taxi. This is the entire official flight route. And if everything goes according to the plan that we have, then this is what we will do. And this will be put in the description box below the video. Here is the wind information at 200, that's 20,000 feet. There's the wind speed and direction. There's the wind speed and direction for 15,000 feet and 10,000 feet in our descent. Well, here's some cloud coverage, definitely down here. Frontal movements trying to move in. And here's some significant weather areas. Some very strong winds 
at flight level 410 according to this. Let's have a look at our flights. Here's the one that we'll be flying at. And crosswind to start out with, headwinds going across. <laughs> oh well, headwinds, we can live with it until we land there at Adelaide. We can handle that. Here's the cruise profile, starting out here on the coast at Sydney, climbing up, going across, this is 34,000 feet, and dropping down into Adelaide here. The tropos pause is right here. We are not going to be climbing anywhere near that, so our air should be stable enough at this altitude to be able to turn off the seatbelt signs. All right, time to go into Navigraph. Well, here we are showing, this is Navigraph and this is the lower part of Australia. So we click on flights. We click new flight from SimBrief and bring in the latest flight. And there, there it is all the way along. Click on opening the charts for Sydney and we're going to need airport information. We're going to need the parking bays in the domestic and the coordinates for the domestic. Right, I'm de deleting the TESAT and I'm using the CADOM 1 departure. That will be our departure for today. Going over to our destination, opening up the charts list, we need to find the airport information and we need the parking stands and coordinates for our arrival. And it seems that it's one of these stands, 21 I think it was, that they came in at. So we will try to follow this and come in at the same stand. Okay, we have it. There's our route. So I've made those changes. <clears throat> we are now going to be using the Black 3 Alpha for our arrival SID star, I should say, arrival star, and we will be using the CADOM 1 for our departure. So with those in mind, we're now ready to make our preparations in the cockpit. Ah, oh, there you are. Do come on in and take your seat. The guest today is Aviation Action, all the way from Sydney, Australia. And guess what? That is where we are now, right here at Sydney Airport. Yankee, Sierra, Sierra, Yankee. Y-S-S-Y. And it is a marvelous scenery. This scenery is by Fly Tampa, by the way. Let me do a quick view here with the camera. Here I am looking left and look at the detail. It even has ear protection must be worn. And out here, emergency fuel push button we are at stand 14. Stand 14 and this is domestic terminal 1. And here's more information. Now, you are going to have to tell me whether or not this is as real as it gets because you are the one who lives in Sydney and know this airport well. So, You'll have to tell me, 
does this match the real thing? I've got the fuel on board. It has been chucking it down with rain. What happened to summer? I feel cheated. I came down under to get some warm sunshine and away from the cold of England. And look, it looks just like England. <laughs> oh, well. Colston, Newcastle in this case, I suppose. But it has stopped raining for the moment, but you can see the ground is all wet. Right, the first thing that we're going to need to do is turn on the battery. We have 26 volts. And then turn on the fuel pumps. And then start the APU. Now, this particular airport scenery is made by Fly Tampa. And I'm showing... 13, 14 frames per second up on these big screens. But these, of course, are 4K resolution. And I've got all the stops pulled out. So I suppose there would be some impact. The EGT is getting ready as soon as this blue light pops on. There it is. I now switch to the APU and I have 115 volts powering the system. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the IRS, which is our GPS system for sat-nav. I'm going to turn on the galley. You never know that in there already, they may just come out and give us a good cup of tea. Emergency exit lights are on. No smoking. Fasten seat belts. And then over here, I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat. We want to make sure we keep the windows nice and dry. I'm going to turn on the probes. And the probes, of course, are located on the side of the fuselage over on that side. And they're well out of the way of anybody working. And then I'm going to turn on the hydraulic pumps. The light here for forward service hatch and equipment, that's our stairs and the open port on the side. Then over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, the recirculating fans and the packs. And listen, there's that rush of air that's going through all the nozzles now and keeping the interior of the cabin nice and comfortable for us. And the next thing I'm going to do is turn on the steady light down there. Now that's the basics from starting a cold and dark cabin. Okay, we're now ready to go in and program the FMC with those changes that we made. We check the air act to make sure that it is current and that there are no problems with the programming. Position, we are, of course, Y, S, S, Y. And we are at gate 14 in domestic terminal 1. I don't know if this will come up. Let's see if it does. Not in the database. Okay. Then we're going to have to go and check the charts. Access from taxiway C14, it should be 33559. 9. 33, and 151.10.6. 151.10.6. So that is what we put in. Go back up to the previous page. Now we have our starting position for our sat nav. Now we go to the root, so we go Y, S, S, Y, and we're going to go to Y, P, A, D. We are Ryanair, that's R, Y, R, and we're number 186. Go to next page. Now this is where we're going to make those slight changes to our root. The first point we're going to go to is KDOM. So K, A, D. O M, and then we're going to go direct to L I D L I. 
L-I-D-L-I. Then we're going to take the Hotel 44, Hotel 44, and that's going to take us to Maxim, M-A-X-E-M. Then we take the Quebec 60, so Q60 over here, and then we go to black, B-L-A-C-K. And that is our route. So execute that, go to the fix, and then we put in the fix for our destination, which is Y-P-A-D. We need a four mile circle, we need a 10 mile circle, and we need a 30 mile circle. Now we go to descent, go to forecast, and here's where we put in the information for our descent. Now transition level in Australia is flight level 110. So I'm going to put 110 up here. Then we need the elevate the altitudes of 200, 150 and 10,000. The Q and H at our destination is 1010. So 1010 is the Q and H. At 20,000 feet, the wind direction and speed is 304 at 22. So 304 at 22. At 15,000 feet, it is 292 at 18. 292 at 18. And at 10,000 feet, it is 327 at 19. So 327 at 19. And then we execute that. Departures. Now this is where we need to listen to the ATIS and find out what the local conditions are. And ATIS here is 126.25. 126.25. Decimal 25. Kingsford Smith International Airport Information. Mike 0258. Zulu wind calm visibility greater than 20 miles. Sky condition. Q crowds at 1,500, 5,000 scattered. Ceiling 7,000 broken. Temperature 22.20. Altimeter 1014. Landing and departing. Runway 25. Runway 26 right. Runway 26 left. Runway 27. Runway 28. Runway 2 minor. Runway 30. Runway 31. Runway 32 right. Runway 32 left, runway 33 right, runway 33 center, runway 33 left, runway 34 left, and runway 34 right. The FR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact you have Mike. Well we have Mike and there's such a lot of runways that are in operation. The only way we're going to be sure as to which one we're going to be using is to ask the ground for clearance to a runway. So we are going to be departing to the west. So Sydney ground, Ryanair 186 with Mike request taxi for takeoff departure to the west. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 34 left via taxiway Charlie Bravo Bravo minor alpha 4 alpha alpha 6 contact tower on 120.5 when ready. Taxi two and hold short runway three four left using taxiway Charlie Bravo Bravo minor alpha four alpha alpha six Ryanair one eight six. Right, we are going to be going on three four left, which is exactly what we had hoped. So I'm going to put three four left in there, and we're going to be using the Canon one departure, and then I'm going to go to arrivals. And we are still presuming that we will be coming in on the localizer Zulu for runway 23. So I'm going to put that one in. And it's the gully transition. And it's going to be the black 3 Zulu. That should be it. Execute that. Go to legs. Now I'm going to click over here to plan and I'm going to go through each of these legs step by step to see if there's any discontinuity and this is what I'm looking at. 
In fact, let me go ahead and video this as we go through it. Okay, so I'm going to go through each step. So far, so good. Looking for discontinuities is what I'm looking for. There's the 30 mile line that we put in. And there's the gully. And it goes straight down, look at that, straight down to the runway. We have a good flight plan. And that is how we do that. Okay, clicking back to map. I'm now going to go to weather on here and click on the data. I'm going to put terrain on for yours in case there are any big mountains and data, of course. And I'm turning on the TCAS so that that is active and now we're ready to complete the programming on the on the FMC so I'm going to go now to root perform initialization now fuel is 9327 kilograms the reserves are 3811 and the trip and taxi is 4,854. Now that comes to 8,665 or 8.7. So 8.7 and put that in. The reserve for in case we have to go down to Melbourne is 3.8. So 3.8. I double click that and it calculates. Cost index is 6. Our cruise altitude today is 340. So 340. The cruise wind at is 290 at 27. So 290 at 27. Transition altitude, remember, is different from uh, the transition level. The transition altitude is 10,000 feet. So 10,000 10, feet and put that in and execute that. And one limit, which is 22 degrees. And for takeoff, we'll be using flaps 10. But I'm going to go down now to the next page because I'm going to switch this to wet because it is wet out there. That will make a difference on the calculation. And now I'm going to double click that and that gives me the center of gravity and what I have on the trim wheel which is 4.79. One click on each of these gives me B1 rotation and B2 speed which is takeoff. Right, now we've got all of that. If we're departing on runway 34 left, the heading I need to set on 34 left is 335. So I spin this to 335. Spin this to 335. And yours too, I'll do yours. 335. That's the initial heading for our departure. I'm going to put in here 34,000 feet because we're presuming that we're not going to have any problems. And 34,000 feet for our cruising altitude is being set in our pressurization because that is what will give comfort to the people in the cabin. The airport runway, the elevation in Adelaide is 20 feet, so I'm going to leave that at zero. And I'm 
everybody's on board now so I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the door switch this to RTO I'm going to turn on the yaw damper and watch the the light just went out I'm going to switch this to 148 for our takeoff speed all right so everything's looking good so far put the flight director on my side then your side and then I'm going to check and I've got a green light on the VNAV and the LNAV button which says our calculations are all correct so now I'm going to arm the throttle the next thing I, I need to do is I need to make sure that the localizer of 109 Point seven is put in for our destination and also the Adelaide BOR of 116.4 so 116.4 and put that in now I'm going to put BOR1 here BOR2 there and I'll do the same for you and that way we have extra capability of finding Adelaide and coming in for a proper landing. Right, everything is looking good so far. Back to legs on that. Okay, we are now ready, I think, to make our check before we do the pushback. Alright, fuel is checked, windows are all locked, seatbelt signs are on, check, door lights are out, MCP is programmed, takeoff thrust, everything is done to you. Pre-flight can run it, aerolon trim is free. Now, oh, it started raining again, it started raining. Oh, I thought the weather would be better here because it's summer. I have been cheated oh well now when we push back we are going to need to push back and have our nose go to the right and our tail to the left because we need to go down the Bravo taxiway so now the anti-collision light goes on and we're ready now to ask the nice people on the ground to get their umbrellas out and to give us a pushback. So, are you ready? Are we all set? Okay, then here we go. Go to menu, FM actions, pushback. Turn the nose to the right, 90 degrees, select the tug, and here we go. Oh, which engine would you like to start first today? Number one or number two? It's your choice. What, which would you like? You'd like to start number two? No problem. All right, here we go. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback. Tail to the left. Release parking brake, please. Parking brake is off. And now I'm going to turn the packs off and get ready to start engine number two first. So I'm switching to number two engine over here and as soon as we start moving back I'm going to turn this and then Bridge that will go. start the engines to spin. So here we go and then down here the start valve has opened. Here you can see the N2 spinning up. When this gets to 24 then I'm going to introduce fuel and hopefully the engines will ignite. Ah, there's somebody out there. Looks like he's getting pretty wet. All right, fuel is going in. Now I'm looking for the engine gas temperature to rise to show that we're getting an ignition. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go out, which it did. And we should start to hear the engines in a minute. There, 
there's the engines kicking in right we have a start and I'm looking up here we have 115 volts now I'm switching to engine number one starting engine one start valve has opened engine is spinning up as soon as this gets to 24 I'll bring in the fuel Set. Parking brake is set. And there's 24 set. introducing the fuel. Now I'm looking for the engine gas temperature to start rising to show that we have a good hot start. Steering pin is pulled. And I'm looking now for the low oil right. pressure again. Point. Thank you, gentlemen. And the engine gas temperature is coming up very nicely. I can hear the engines and I'm now looking for 115 volts to appear up here. We have 115 volts. When this tick mark goes off, that says that the engines are stable and the generators are. Now I can switch to the generators in the main engines. I can turn on the packs again, turn off the APU and turn off the APU in here as well. Turn on the three taxi lights. Look at that. What, what a lot of weather we have here. By the way, this is active sky. So this is giving us real live weather as it is happening. And it did say it was going to be showers. Right, I'm going to start the Navigraph charts now. All right, I've got Navigraph charts active now, and you should be able to see it right here on the side. Now, you can see that red mark at the top of the screen on that little chart down here. That is where we are. And we have to go down the Bravo taxiway which means we've got to go out there and take the first on the left right in that case then attendance hang on we're about to move and I'm going to go to flaps 10 I'll verify the takeoff speeds and I have to make one adjustment there the flaps are in transit and we're doing fine. So we need to go over there and then down the Bravo taxiway. So are you ready? Here we go then. Make sure nothing is coming at us. We're very lucky. With this rain, all the kamikaze vehicles are under cover somewhere. <laughs> and that is to our advantage. This is very detailed airport though. Very detailed scenery indeed. I really like this, this is good. I'm gonna have to take uh, some video of this from the taxiway and then you can verify for me how accurate it is from what you understand and know of this. We're on the Bravo taxiway and we've got quite a ways to go. Now the International, I'm just going to stop here. Not supposed to, but we're Ryanair. We can do what we want. Now this is the domestic terminal over here on our left. And here you can see that we are on the Bravo taxiway tower down there. 
we have to go all the way down there to get to the runway. There you can see other aircraft in the vicinity and over there that's the international terminal. Now when I came to Sydney by a commercial airliner I would have gone into that side but it was a long long time ago and I don't recognize any of the landmarks around here on this airport so I can well imagine a lot of things have changed. Oh, there's some vehicles moving out there, but not towards us. All right, and rain stopped for a moment, and now it's back on again. Look at all the puddles on the taxiway. Well, stopped. I suppose that's showers for you. But this is really, really nice scenery. And I will say this about P3D version, I've got the version two on it. It does a lovely job of keeping everything running smooth on the screens. And remember, I have 4K monitors out here, really pulling a load, pulling a load. I've got grass, I've got, you can even see the grass on the side, puddles appear, the rain is pouring down again, oh my goodness me. Well, I've got to keep going down here and I've got to cross over a runway here, make sure that nothing is coming in either direction. got no problem we seem to be okay it's one thing getting kamikaze vehicles is another one having a, a 747 bang into you isn't it look at this beautiful scenery Wow, 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 wow. Okay, we've crossed safely, and we're going to have to cross the main runway in just a moment, the active runway. I'm going to get down here to B7, is it? B, B9. I've got to go down here to B9. So I'm on B. Where is B9? Is that B9? No, that's B8. So I need to go down until I get to B9.
runway. Very confusing this. You've got to remember to steer straight as well as look at my instructions here. And turn up here and then I've got to turn left at this junction here. Wow, they really have you going all over the place on this one, don't they? Okay, now I'm going to move the map up a little bit. Yeah, now I go straight down here until I get to Alpha 6. Now we're on the Alpha Taxiway here. And that's the Lima Junction that we've just passed. a bit of a breeze blowing around it's making life interesting for steering down the taxiway here this looks like the Alpha 5 coming up yep it is and then the Alpha 6 is at the end and that's the one that we want Just as well I cleaned the windows today, isn't it? Ha. But look at the detail of the weather and the surrounding countryside. Ships over there and docking uh, dockyards. Really detailed scenery, really detailed. All right, this is the Alpha 6. We'll turn around, go to the whole short line, and then we'll get our clearance to take off. Rotate. 
autopilot. And we are allowed to change frequency, which is nice. Going to flaps five. Landing gear lever is off. the middle marker and there is the environs of Sydney below before we lose it in the cloud and the rain
update as to where we are. We are 30.5 BME miles from Adelaide from the VOR. We're on our descent. The weather has cleared up quite a bit and we are looking not bad at all. I have the fasten seatbelt signs on, the lights are on and we're descending through 6,300 feet at the moment. Now I'm going to contact the tower to get our landing permission. ATIS has reported that runway 23 is in use. So, contacting and
seeing the runway from this angle. Because we're flying sideways. It's an eight knot crosswind. And there's the indicator you can see there. It's coming from nine, it's nine knots, my goodness. But we're coming down the glide slope, we're not doing too bad. Alright, now I'm locking on to the glide slope itself. We're all lights are on and engines continue. So engine start switches continuous, speed brake lever is armed. And now I'm going to flat 2500 2, check. I have the runway in sight. We have two white, two red. We're looking good on that. And crew secure for landing. Everything is looking good across the board. We are on final and we are on the glide slope going down. Right. Gear is going down and we have three green lights. Flaps are down. We are on the glide slope. We are looking good. Well, what do you think? My goodness, look at all the detail there. This is really, really beautiful scenery here. And this is this is Adelaide. Okay, so. I have control! <laughs> oh well. There's the outer marker. And I'm now resetting the MCP in case of a missed approach. 1000. 1000, check. And we're coming down nicely.
take your hand out, we'll turn off at this one. Here we go. Alright, we'll stop here for a moment. And we'll do the cleanup. Okay, everything is looking good. Crew is released. And flaps it. Coming up. Got a sticky gauge there. Alright, there's where we're at. You can see we've turned off at Foxtrot 5. Exactly the same place, I think, as the previous flight that we're following. So, all we have to do now is follow this around and go to the main terminal building and I'm going to look for stand 24 and this is the Adelaide Airport look at the detail on this impressive was an interesting crosswind landing. I mean the wind was blowing me right from the side. But fortunately the gusts were down to a minimum so it wasn't too bad. But the weather here is a lot better than it is in Sydney. Alright we're going up along here we'll have to cross the the one, two, and three, zero runway in just a moment. And here's the airport and the view. trying to steer at the same time as take a video here. <laughs> this runway then we will get to an intersection then we have to turn right and swing around according to the chart now this is made by AU Scene. The scenery is AU Scene and it is quite detailed, quite, quite detailed indeed. This is the first scenery I've ever used by this particular company but I'm well impressed with this. Alright, crossing over the runway making sure nothing is coming. And then we need to take the Alpha 4 and go down here. And here we go. Stick your hand out for me, would you please? Okay, good. Very 
impressive. And then we go around this bend. Australian Air Express is the name on the side of that building to the left. My frame rate is 25, 26, 25, yeah, not bad, not bad at all. And there's the main terminal building right up ahead there, to the left. to find 24. Now to get to 24 we'll go up on here and make a left turn at the Lima intersection. Oh, maybe we'd better take the first one. I'm not sure. Where is 24? down there at the left, okay. Well, let's take this first one and then see which ones are available. Actually, that first one would probably suit Ryanair very nicely. take this one. This is 27 right. Ryanair generally doesn't like those jetways because they, they get charged for using them. But we'll come in on this one. 27 right. go and coming up brake is on lights are off and engine shut down all right now we'll do the cleanup switching everything off galley off seatbelt signs are off Stairs are going down and the hatch is opening up. Alright, window heat is going off, probes are off, hydraulic pumps are off, and lights are all off. Okay, and people are getting out. That is where they go in, is they follow this where they've got that fellow right there. See, do you see him? Interesting, they've got motion people there. Okay. All right. Fuel is off, APU is off, and power batteries are all off. Yeah, they've got animated people here. I didn't realize that they had that. But this is quite impressive. Quite impressive indeed. And this is AU scene. AU scene. Well, we made the flight. We did a good job, I thought, of landing, cause considering that it was a vicious crosswind. But I've enjoyed this flight. I didn't think much to the weather in Sydney, 
but the scenery was great and here the weather is great and the scenery is great too so we've got the best of both worlds at last aviation action thank you for inviting me to make this flight for you i hope that you managed to get a a good picture of ryanair 186 to add to those plane spotting collection photographs that you like to take <laughs> And I will see you all on the next flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.